Hello and welcome to List of Worksheets in a Dropdown. My name's Jeff. I'm glad you're here. Hey, let's just jump right in. All right, what we're trying to do is create a dropdown that contains a list of worksheets in the workbook. So here we have Department ABC. Here we have three sheets, Department ABC. So we're trying to let the user pick a worksheet, okay? And depending on that selection, we want formulas to retrieve values or do something based on the selected sheet. So for example, if department A is selected, we want to return the manager and the total. So here's the manager, the total of those. If they pick department B, we want this to update and operate on the department B worksheet. The manager is DMK, DMK, and the sum is the sum of all these transactions and basically so on and so forth, okay? That's our goal. Now, there's a couple of different ways to do this. I'm gonna present one solution that uses a data validation dropdown. It uses some formulas with the indirect function, and then it uses Power Query to dynamically generate this list of worksheet names so that if going forward we insert new worksheets, we can just right click and refresh and update this, this table, okay? So let's get into how to build this. Now there's basically four main steps and then there's a bonus step for the Power Query step which is optional. So step one is we need to create a table that contains a list of the worksheet names. If this workbook has only a handful of worksheets, I'm just gonna do it manually, all right? It's the fastest, it's the easiest. But if my workbook has a ton of worksheets or we're adding new sheets or deleting sheets and we want it to be more dynamic, then stick around for that bonus segment at the end because that's why I'm gonna talk about using Power Query to generate this list of sheets dynamically. So let's start with the manual approach and I'm gonna create a column header name and then I'm just gonna literally type in all of these worksheet names, department A, department B, and department C. Once I have my list, I need to convert that to a table. The way that I do that is select a cell, insert table. This is gonna bring up the create table dialog. I'm gonna ensure that this my table has headers checkbox is created because I have this column label name. Then I click okay. And now Excel has converted that ordinary range into a table. And I can confirm the table's name by going to the table design ribbon tab and looking at the very first field called table name. The default is table one. I could give this a more descriptive name if I wanted to. I would type in a descriptive name and hit enter. I'd want to avoid spaces and funky characters, but for now we'll just stick with the default name table one. So that is step one. Step two is adding a defined name. And the way that we do this step is we go to formulas, name manager, and this is gonna bring up a dialog that has all of the names in the workbook. And we can even see that our table name, table one, is included. And here we can add, edit, or delete. In this case, I want to add a new name. And I'm gonna give this new name, uh, let's call it sheet list. You could call it anything else you want, just avoid spaces and funky characters. And down here on the refers to, I'm gonna type in the table name, table one. If you changed your table name, use the corresponding table name. Uh, this leading equal sign is important, it's required, so make sure you use a leading equal sign. We click OK. And now I have successfully added this name sheet list to my name manager. Now I can close this, and that was step two. Now step three is to use data validation to create the in-cell dropdown. The way that I do that is I go to data, and then I click data validation. I want to allow a list and the source of that list is equal to, and that equal sign is required, the name that I just set up. In this case, it was sheet list. If you used a different name, use whatever name uh, you created. And then I click OK. And if that worked, I should have a drop down that contains the list of choices that are in my table. And as I can see, we got that working. Okay, now the next step is to write the formulas that operate on the selected sheet, okay? So, before we write this formula, let's just kind of observe something. If I was gonna type an equal sign and retrieve a value from another worksheet, let's say the, the manager from cell B4, and hit enter, I wanna actually inspect the syntax. Okay, so I'm gonna look at this formula, and what I see is, the sheet name 
but I see that the sheet name is enclosed in single quotes. Now, depending on what you're working on, if your sheet name does not have any spaces, you might not see the single quotes, um, but we're gonna sort of future-proof this so that our formulas continue to work even if our sheet names have spaces. And the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna make sure that I use these single quotes to enclose this worksheet name. So that's like observation one. Sheet name enclosed in single quotes is first. The next thing I wanna realize is that there is an exclamation point that separates the sheet name from the cell reference, okay? And then I have the cell reference. So it would be really, really convenient if all I needed to do to get this to work was to delete that sheet name and then point it to this cell and hit enter, but that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work. So what we need to do is we need to use a function called indirect. And at a high level, what the indirect function does is it converts a text string into an actual Excel reference. It converts a text string into an actual cell reference. So all I need to do is rebuild that text string that we just saw um, using concatenation and using different segments. So lots of big fancy terms here, but here's, here's basically what it looks like. Do you remember the first thing we needed was an open single quote to enclose the sheet name, correct? I can't just use a single quote though because I'm typing in text strings. And if you've used Excel for a while, you'll know that text strings are enclosed in double quotes, okay? So it's gonna get a little funky, but what we do is we do double quotes and, and inside of the double quotes, we use an open single quote. So we can just do double quote, single quote, double quote. Um, we could do single quote and then put it inside of double quotes. We could do a double quote and then put a single quote in there. So however you want to do it is fine, but it's, it's a single quote enclosed in double quotes. Then we use the concatenation operator to join the next segment. And we could use concatenation functions instead of the concatenation operator, that's fine. But concatenation is just a fancy term. It just means I'm joining independent segments. So the first one was the open single quote. Then I need the sheet name. Where am I gonna get that? It's right here. And then I need to do another concatenation operator to join the last segment. What was the last segment? It was a closing single quote, but I can't just start with a single quote because I have to enclose this segment in double quotes. So I start my double quote, then I do a single quote, I do the exclamation point, I do the cell reference, which was B4, double quote to close it, close the indirect function, and before I hit enter, let's just review this thing. I'm using the indirect function to convert this text string into an actual functioning reference. I want to use the sheet name, so I have to start this with an open single quote, but I have to enclose that in double quotes. Then I use the concatenation operator to combine that with the selected sheet name, and then I combine that with a closing single quote, an exclamation point, and the cell reference before, all enclosed in double quotes, hit enter. Okay, I think it worked. Let's just check it out. Department A is JPM, Department A, JPM. Department B is DMK, Department B, DMK, and Department C is TPS, and yes, I think we got it. Now here's the cool thing about indirect. <clears throat> it works where, where we want to use a normal re reference, whether that's a cell reference or range reference. So for example, we can also use that inside of a sum function. So for example, if I wanted to sum everything in column C, let's just kind of look at this formula. Here I have a sum function, and I can replace all of this stuff, which is a, a column reference, with another indirect function. Okay, so what I would do is I would go indirect, I would do an open single quote, join it with the concatenation operator to the sheet name here, join that with a closing single quote, exclamation, C, C, close the double quote, close the indirect function, and close the sum function. Before I hit enter, let's review this crazy formula. I'm using the sum function to add up the values in this range. Which range? 
we're using indirect fun uh, we're using the indirect function to co to create this range and it's going to combine these three segments an open single quote sheet name close single quote exclamation and column c enter Department A is 4621. Department A is 4621. Department B is 2300. Department B is 2300. And I think we got it. Okay. So that is um, the four steps to get this working. Now let's talk about that optional bonus step, which is, hey, I don't really want to type these sheet names manually. You know, I have 25, 50, 100 sheets, I need a way to have Excel do that for me. So of course this is Excel, of course there are many ways to do this. The way that we're gonna look at here is by using Power Query. And what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna go to Get Data from File from Workbook. Okay, and then we're gonna browse to the workbook and we're gonna select Sheet Dropdown and click Import. Now, at this point, we're going to get a list of the sheets that appear um, in the workbook. And so we can pick any of these sheets. It doesn't matter because we're going to change it. But for now, I'm going to click Summary. And I'm going to click Transform Data. Okay. And now what I see is I see a list of applied steps that has a bunch of stuff. Okay. The only one that I want right now is the source step. So I'm actually going to remove all of these other steps and I can just do that by hitting the X and now I'm back to source. And what I see is that is that Power Query retrieved a list of the sheets in the workbook. But there's a little caveat here because this actually brings in other names as well. Okay, other names as well. So let me show you kind of how this works. I'm going to go ahead and close this Power Query uh, window and discard any changes. And when I, when I opened up this workbook, what I had was I had the four sheets, but I did not have this table. I created this table, and while I was working on it, I did not save it. So watch what happens when I commit these changes to the workbook by actually hitting Save. Now I hit Save. Now, in the saved copy of this, there is a table. So now watch what happens next time I go to Power Query. Get data from file from workbook. I browse to the workbook. I double click it. And now I get a list. And this list now includes that table. So Power Query is actually looking at more than just the sheets. Okay, and I need to account for that because down the road, I want to kind of think ahead and kind of future-proof this. I only really want the sheet names returned to this list. So again, I'm going to pick one. I'm going to click Transform. And when Power Query opens, here we go. I'm going to, again, remove these extra applied steps so that I only have source. And now I can see I have this new item here, table one. And it is a kind table. What I want to do is I want to make sure that going forward, if we're adding tables or names or sheets or whatever, that I'm just pulling back sheets. So an easy way to do that is to apply a filter. So I'm just going to use a drop down and I'm going to basically, you know, select sheets. Or I could also go to text filters is equal you know, to the word sheet. That's fine. And I'm going to click OK. But the point is I filtered this down so that it's only going to return worksheet names. Now, the other thing that I want to do is in the drop down list, I don't want the summary sheet to appear. I only want the other sheets to appear. So again, we can just apply a filter and filter out summary and click OK. Now this name column includes what I want to return, which is all of the worksheet names other than the summary sheet. And this is the only column I want returned to the workbook. So I'm just going to right click and remove other columns. Now I'm looking pretty good. The query name is summary. I could change this name if I want, but I'll just go ahead and leave it with summary. And I'm going to close and load to. And I'm going to send the results into a table. I could pick a new worksheet if I want, or I could click existing worksheet. I'm going to pick this is fine and click OK. Now I get a list of the worksheets. So all I need to do now is tell this drop down to reference this new query results table instead of this original manual table. 
And the way that we do that is just to update the name. So I'm going to go back to the name manager. I'm going to select sheet list edit. And instead of table one, I'm going to use the name summary or whatever other name you may have given it. And if you're not sure what that name is, by the way, let me go ahead and click close. You can always select the table, go to table design, and it'll be right here in table name. Now, the data uh, validation dropdown is referencing the values in this results table. So I can actually just delete all of this stuff. And now let's say I add a new worksheet. Okay. So I go over here and let's just give this a name and I'm going to call it department D. I'm going to come back here and department D is not in the list and it's because it's not in our query results table. So if I right click and refresh, it is not going to appear. And we talked about why earlier. It's because when it is doing its refresh, it's looking at the saved version. Okay, and so when I inserted this worksheet, I did not save or commit that change yet. So what I need to do is click save. And now when I right click and refresh, now that worksheet appears. And now that appears in the drop down as well. Okay. And so that is how we can use basically a table with a defined name with a data validation drop down and the indirect function to allow the user to select a worksheet name from a drop down and have formulas that operate on that selected sheet. Cool. All right. Hopefully that helps. Have a great day. This video is a production of Excel University.